And we are live. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we will be discussing the stimulus bill that was recently passed, better known to you and I as the CARES Act. We'll cover what's in the bill as far as relief for individuals that have lost their jobs, small businesses that may be facing some types of hardship. Also, there's relief in this bill for homeowners who may need some help with their mortgage or delaying their mortgage payments, or as well as people who they have student loan debt. And also, we'll start talking about some of the things that you could actually be doing with this free time if you've lost your job or you're quarantined, because what you're going to begin to see is there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be pushing a lot of conspiracy theories on you and about the government and about these conspiracy theories with these agencies. And that's the worst thing that you can do in a time like this. The economy is going to fundamentally shift. What happened with this pandemic is similar to what happened in 9-11, where once this is over with, our economy is going to shift and certain industries are going to begin to contract. I've said this before, you're going to see dislocations in certain industries where certain industries are going to contract so hard that it's going to be, it's going to feel like a, a depression. And in, in other industries, it's going to feel like a recession. And then there's going to be opportunities in other places. And what you should be doing with this time is not focusing on a bunch of fear and uncertainty and doubt, but taking this time and whatever aid that you may be getting and reinvesting back into yourself to get better skills and become more valuable to the marketplace. I think that that's the best thing that you could do with your time right now, because trust me, when one opportunity or one door closes or goes away, another opportunity will present itself and you need to make sure that you're utilizing your time to develop skills to become more valuable in the marketplace. So rather than just focusing on everything that's going wrong, really focusing on some things that you can be doing to earn some money uh, and become more valuable in the marketplace. As you come into the live stream, please do me a favor and like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and make sure that it's on all. If you want to uh, receive all of my notifications, if YouTube isn't sending my notifications out, simply join my mailing list, which is in the description below. Enter in your name and your email and I'll be able to notify you every time I'm going live or I'm uploading a video. Also, if you want to contact me, you can simply follow me on Instagram, send me a direct message, and we can begin the dialogue there. Also, if you want to support the content financially, a link to both my Cash App and PayPal is in the description below. With that being said, let's get into um, what's the presentation going to be tonight. And as you can see right here, this is just a visual representation as, so that you can see the size as to where the money is going. And it says how the $2 trillion breaks down how the $2 trillion breaks down. And you can see for individuals, it's estimated that $560 billion will go to you, the individuals. Then for small businesses, they have $377 billion. Big corporations, $500 billion. $153 billion going to public health. $43.7 billion going to education. $339 billion going to state and local governments. And $26 billion going to, save, to the safety nets. I want to understand and I want to stress this to you. You have to be able to be open-minded when you're discussing things, right? Like for me, I'm a libertarian. I believe in small government. I believe in limited government. But I do understand that many of you, you have a different philosophy and ideology than me. And many of you are in positions where you may need this aid so that you can get by and do the things that you have to do. I understand that. That's why I'm not one of these individuals who I'm going to just be anti something because I'm going to financially benefit from the destruction of the dollar. So I'm going to be successful no matter what. So I, I, when I present this information, this is really just to help some of you who you may not have time to read 880 pages of legislation. Like I sat down, I went through the bill and I went to the New York Times article, which basically is highlighting all of the things and giving it to you in plain English. But I, again, you know, I'm a three dimensional thinker. I'm not a rigid person. So I just want to be very clear because I know a lot of you are going to try to come on here and say, oh, well, you know, isn't this going to cause inflation? Yes. 
and I'm going to make a lot of money from the inflation and I'm going to make a lot of money in crypto and I'm going to make a lot of money in gold and silver. But there there's individuals who are not positioned to benefit from that financially. And I want to make sure that I'm giving them information as well and not just focusing on the investment aspects. Uh, Dark and Devon, thank you for the donation. I find your videos informative. I appreciate it. So, again, it's about balance, guys. It's not always about what you believe. So and just so you can see. For those of you who actually want to go and read the entire 880 pages, um, let's post that here. Paste. So put the bill in there. <clears throat> so you can go there and read this legislation if you want to. Also, this is a calculator right here that will tell you how much money you're going to receive as far as the stimulus bill is concerned. This is how much I will receive from the stimulus bill, whether you're single, married, head of household, etc. Thank you for the donation, Joel Hogan. Keep up the content, no problem. Uh, so you can go here and enter in your information and see how much money you will qualify for. Again, giving you guys some resources so that you can go and you know figure some things out in the meantime. This is also another calculator. I kind of like this calculator better. Let's copy that so that you can go there. So, and, and see, this is the problem, the problem with our government. Is that think about it? It's 800. This piece of legislation, going back here real quick, and this is this is one of the biggest problems with government, and why I say that government's inefficient. But I'm not going to go on a rant. I'm just going to keep it real quick. This piece of legislation is 800. This legislation is 880 pages. There is no way that the members of Congress sat down and read 880 pages. There's no way. So there's a lot of stuff in this bill. I guarantee you a lot of wasteful spending in this bill that's not going to be targeted enough to get to the individuals who need it the most. This is one of the th this is one of the biggest problems out here that you could think of. Is that this 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 type of legislation is the worst because it gets passed so quick, it gets out there and you don't really <laughs> you don't really know where's the money going to. There's no real accountability for the money. And there's no checks and balances. It's just write a check. And this is why we have so much debt as a nation, because so many people understand cronyism. There are so many people that have their hands out that are going to get broken off from this bill and they're going to make money. And, that you know, that's one of the problems. But anyway, I digress. You know, it's always pork in these bills and it's just inefficient, which is why we need a decentralized system. But I'm not going to uh, dive too far on that. So. Right here, let's put this article in here for those of you who want to go and read this bill. I mean, read this article because pretty much straightforward rather than reading 880 pages. So it says the FAQ frequently asked questions on stimulus checks, unemployment and the virus plan. It says the $2 trillion relief bill will send money directly to Americans greatly expand unemployment coverage and make a number of other changes. So let's get straight to it. It says stimulus payments. How large will the payments be? Most adults will get $1,200, although some would get less. For every qualifying child age 16 or under, the payment will be an additional $500. Now, how many payments will there be? There will only be one payment of $1,200 plus the $500 for every child under the age of 16. So I want to be very clear with that. There's only a one-time payment of $1,200. This is a cash payment. Now, it says, how do I know if I will get the full amount? It depends on your income. Single adults with social security numbers, meaning you have to be a legal citizen, who have, an, who have an adjusted income of $75,000 or less will get the full amount. So if you're a single adult and you make less than $75,000, you will be able to qualify for the $1,200, right? If you're a married couple with no children and you're earning $150,000 or less, you will receive a total of $2,400. And taxpayers filing as head of household will get the full payment if they've earned $112,000 or less. 
So I want to make that very clear so you can understand that. Uh, I got some donations real quick. Let me just check the chat. Uh, Darnell Edmonds said, I have the utmost respect for you. I'm starting a prosperity preservation business and was able to use your business video to professionally get everything in order. You're fearless, my brother, and I admire that. Darnell Edmonds, can you please do me a favor and contact me on... on um, Instagram because I want to use your story as a testimonial for a lot of the people who hate on me and say that I don't do anything for the community. So please do me a favor, Darnell, uh, and hit me up on Instagram so you and I can dialogue a little bit deeper because I definitely want to use your story. And Ray's Realm, I looked into the story with the lady um, Aisha Hall, and tomorrow we're going to do a Q&A. So I'm going to take everyone's questions, everyone that's donated, and I'm going to do a Q&A tomorrow. Don't quote me or don't hold me to this, but it's going to be between two and four o'clock. Thank you for the donation, Raise Room. I got you. Uh, there is stuff. There's something in there for the nonprofit sector. Don't worry about it. Um, so let's get back to the article. Above those income figures, the payments decrease until it stops altogether for single people earning ninety nine thousand dollars. So I want to be clear here, right? Because there was a lot of people saying that if you make more than seventy five thousand dollars, you won't get any money. You will get money. Right, you'll get money. It's just that the payments decrease between seventy-five thousand and ninety-nine thousand as a single person. Once you go above ninety-nine thousand dollars, you don't get anything. So again, you have to actually take that and put it into this calculator. And I encourage you guys to go over here and use these calculators to see how much money you will get from the stimulus bill. So you have to go there and play with that. And it's all based upon last year's filing. Right. Not this year, not 2020, but 2019's uh, income tax. If you file 2019 or 2018. Right. So they're using 2018's tax return or 2019's tax return. It says or a married people who have no children and earn one hundred and ninety eight thousand dollars. According to the Senate Finance Committee, a family with two children will no longer be eligible for any payments if its income surpasses $218,000. So if you make more than $218,000 as a family, you're done. You can't get a payment if someone claims you as a dependent, even if you are an adult. So for those of you who may be college students, right, this is going to be a problem for you. You know, if your parents claim you on their taxes, you're not going to be able to get these stimulus payments. Or, you know, like if your girlfriend or your boyfriend claims you on the taxes, you're not going to be able to um, get your own individual stimulus payment. In any given family, and in most instances, everyone must have a valid Social Security number. We already know that. <clears throat> and it says, you can find your adjusted gross income on line 8B of the 2019 1040 federal tax return. Do college students get anything? Not if anyone claims them as a dependent on a tax return, as I just stated before. So if someone's claiming you, you're done. Um, I'm going to answer that question in a little while, Jason White, about how they're going to be able to get the money straight to you. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, what year's income should I be looking at? 2019. If you haven't prepared a tax return yet, you can use your 2018 return. If you haven't filed that yet, you can use a 2019 Social Security statement showing your income to see what an employer reported to the IRS. So again, 2018 or 2019 tax returns is what they're going off of. I want to be very clear with that. It says, what if my recent income made me ineligible, but I anticipate being uh, being eligible because of a loss of income in 2020? Do I get a payment? The plan does not help people in that circumstance now, but you may benefit once you file your 2020 taxes. I want to be clear with that. And again, you can go read this article uh, on your own if you want to. Will I have to apply to receive a payment? So Jason White just asked this question. No. If the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, already has your bank account information, it will transfer the money to you via direct deposit based on the recent income tax figures it already has. So if you already have your income tax information or I me mean, your um banking information already set up based upon you receiving your tax returns from the previous years they'll be able to direct deposit the money straight to you if they have your bank account information so again uh, i'll post the article in the chat earlier and i'll i'll link 
I will um, pin this article at the top of the comment section so you can go there and look at it again. When will the payment arrive? Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said he expected most people to get their payments within three weeks. In my personal opinion, when you are dealing with the government, government is extremely slow and extremely inefficient. So if they're saying three weeks, I would be shooting for more of the five to six week range. Um, thank you for the donation, not the one. You are appreciate Young King. Your channel is really growing. I appreciate that. Thank you for the donation. Right? Guys, understand government is very slow. So what I encourage you to do is immediately, like once you get off of this video, go and start applying for these things that you can apply for as far as the unemployment benefits and stuff like that. Because these websites, they can't, they can't maintain and handle the amount of traffic that they're going to start to get. Please do not procrastinate with this stuff. Whenever you can get the ball moving with this, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever aspect you're going to apply for, whether it's mortgage relief, whether it's rent relief, whether it's unemployment relief, whatever the case may be, get the ball moving quickly because government is extremely, extremely slow and inefficient. Um, we don't have to worry about that with the payment being redirected. That's not important. What if I haven't filed tax returns recently? Will that affect my ability to receive a payment? Of course it would. It says it could file a return immediately, at least for 2018, according to the IRS website. Those without 2018 tax filings on record could potentially affect mailings of stimulus check, the site says. Guys, it's common sense. If you haven't filed a tax return in 2018, 2019, don't expect to get anything until you file that tax return. Will most people who are receiving Social Security retirement and disability payments each month also get a stimulus check? Yes. So if you're retired or you're on, you know, like SSI, some type of government program, you still qualify to get the $1,200. Remember, guys, we're only talking about the $1,200 one-time payment right now. So it says, so don't worry about that. Will eligible unemployment, unemployed people get those stimulus payments and veterans? Yes and yes. So even if you're getting unemployment insurance benefits, you still qualify for the $1,200 hundred dollar one-time payment i want to repeat that for you again even if you're currently or about to receive unemployment insurance benefits you still qualify for that one time twelve hundred dollar payment so don't think because you're receiving unemployment that you can't go get that twelve hundred dollar payment that twelve hundred dollar one-time payment you can get it and remember you just have to make less than ninety nine thousand dollars as a single individual to get that so it's important that you understand that Will U.S. citizens living abroad get a payment? Yes, as long as they meet the income requirements and have a social security number. This is another question that a lot of people ask. So look, look someone, someone just uh, posted that in the chat. Do people have to pay this back? No, you don't have to pay it back. You're going to pay it back through inflation, but you don't have to directly pay it back. But some people ask the question, do they have to pay taxes on it? Do I have to pay income taxes on the amount of my payment? And the answer is no. So if you receive any type of stimulus from the government, that check for 1200 bucks. You do not have to pay any taxes on that money. It's tax free, just so you understand that. Um, if my income tax refunds are currently being garnished because of a student loan default, will this payment be garnished as well? Yes, the $1,200 is one time as of right now. They will have to introduce a new piece of legislation to give you uh, any additional payments right now the stimulus bill as is constructed with the 2.2 trillion is for a one-time cash payment of twelve hundred dollars but you can still get unemployment and they've added an additional 13 weeks to the 26 weeks and we're going to get to the unemployment aspect in a second don't worry about that but guys remember some of you may be in default for your student loans and your income may be getting garnished right now your checks right they're going to waive that it says no in fact the bill temporarily suspends nearly all efforts to garnish tax refunds to repay debts, including those to the IRS itself. But this waiver may not apply to people who are behind on child support. So if you owe child support, you still owe child support. But for those of you who may have IRS debt 
or you may have student loan debt and your wages are being garnished or your um, tax returns are being garnished, they're waiving that right now. So that's going to help you out a lot. Right. So now we're going to get to the good stuff, the unemployment benefits, because I think that this is going to be real beneficial, because as I said to you guys before, the economy is going to shift. It's going to change. Industries are going to contract and you're going to have a lot of dislocation, especially in the whole retail sector and the um, hospitality sectors like restaurants and dining and stuff like that. Those industries are going to contract because people just aren't going to feel comfortable going back to work with with all, all of the um, with the idea that they could potentially become sick and. Uh, industries like restaurant industries, they're just not going to be able to uh, maintain themselves if they don't have customers coming in. So those type of industries are going to contract, which is why you need to spend this time becoming more valuable in the marketplace and really learning new skills. So let's get to the unemployment, uh, the unemployment benefits. Who will be covered by the expanded program? The plan wraps in far more workers than are usually eligible for unemployment benefits, including self-employed people, and part-time workers. The bottom line, those who are unemployed are partly unemployed or cannot work for a wide variety of virus-related reasons will be more likely to receive benefits. How much will I receive? This is really, really key, and I really want you guys to pay attention to this part because this is extremely important. It says, the average worker earns about $1,000 a week, and unemployment benefits often replace 40 to 45% of that. The expansion will pay an extra amount to fill that gap. Under the plan, excuse me, Eligible workers will get an extra $600 per week on top of their state benefit. But some states are more generous than others. According to the Century Foundation, the maximum weekly benefit in Alabama is $275, but it's $450 in California and $713 in New Jersey. So let's say a worker was making $1,100 per week in New York, should be eligible for the maximum state unemployment benefit of $504 per week. Under the new expansion, expansion, she gets an additional $600 of federal pandemic unemployment compensation for a total of $1,104, essentially replacing her original check. Right. I want to repeat that for you because this is very, very key. How much unemployment benefits you receive, the dollar amount varies depending on your state. So you need to immediately simply go to Google. It's not hard, guys. You have to learn how to be resourceful. Type in your state and type in unemployment and immediately get over there to that unemployment. I live in New York, so I just simply typed in New York unemployment, type in your state unemployment Get to the website and start the process because as I said to you before, a lot of these websites, they don't have the bandwidth and the infrastructure to handle millions of people or hundreds of thousands of people hitting those sites at one time. So do not procrastinate. Go ahead and get it done immediately because I'm telling you, if you wait to the middle of the week, you're going to be in trouble. The websites are going to crash. I'm going to read that for you again. How much will I receive? It depends on your state. The average worker earns about $1,000 a week. And unemployment benefits often roughly, often replace roughly 40 to 45% of that. The expansion will pay an extra amount to fill that gap under the plan. So you're going to get the 40 to 45%. Eligible workers will get an extra $600 per week on top of their state benefits. So you're going to get your state benefits from your state and then an additional $600 per week from the federal government as long as you're unemployed. But some states are more generous than others. According to the Century Foundation, the maximum weekly benefit in Alabama is $275, but it's $450 in California and $713 in New Jersey. So let's say a worker was making $1,100 per week in New York. She'll be eligible 
for the maximum state unemployment benefit of $504. So New York would give her $504. Under the new expansion, she gets an additional $600 per week of federal pandemic unemployment compensation for a total. So you're going to take the state aid plus the federal aid for a total of $1,104, essentially replacing her own paycheck. So basically, she's going to get paid to stay. She's going to make more money on unemployment than she would make working, right? Because when she was working, she was making $1,100. But under this, she's going to be making $1,104. So she's going to be making more money to stay at home, you know. Um, now, it says, are gig workers, freelancers, and independent contractors covered? So these are people, if you drive Uber, uh, if you um, do Lyft on the side, Postmates, Right, you may be a freelancer, you may code and build websites for people, right? Just basically self-employed. Yes, self-employed people are newly eligible for unemployment benefits. So you as a self-employed person, you can get unemployment insurance benefits as well. It says self-employed workers will also be eligible for the additional six hundred dollar weekly benefit provided by the federal government. Yes, Mike John, even Mike John, even the people, if you're already receiving SSI, if you're already receiving, you know, a food stamps, SNAP benefits, you still can get the one time payment of twelve hundred dollars as, as long as you make less than seventy five thousand dollars as a single person. And what was it um, to be accurate? Let me just go back up to this. Um, as of as of. Yeah, 75, as long as you make less than $75,000, which obviously you would if you're receiving SNAP benefits, you qualify for the one-time payment of $1,200. And you get additional $500 for every child under the age of 16. So back to the unemployment benefits. So guys, that's important for those of you who are self-employed. You're going to get an additional $600 every week for being unemployed. So it's some type of relief in there for you. Now, for those of you, it says, what if my child's school or daycare shut down? If you rely on a school, a daycare, or another facility to care for a child, elderly parent, or another household member so that you can work, and that facility has been shut down because of the virus, you're also eligible for unemployment benefits, right, from the federal government. So you're... you're you can get that $600. Like if your work life has been impacted and you can't go to work or you have to change your work hours, you can get a piece of that $600 weekly aid that's coming from the federal government. And give me a second. Let me take a sip of water. This is another one. I had to quit my job as a, dec uh, a direct result of the virus. Would I be eligible to apply for benefits? This one is a little iffy. It says, it depends. Let's say your employer didn't lay you off, but you had to quit because of a quarantine recommended by a healthcare provider or because your child's daycare closed and you are the primary caregiver. Situations like that are covered. So again, if you had a job, and because the school's closed down or the quarantine's going on and you have to stay at home with your kid, you qualify for the additional uh, unemployment benefits that the federal government is giving you. And I want to get to the weeks right here. So it says, whom does the bill leave out? Workers who are able to work from home and those receiving paid sick leave or paid family leave are not covered. New entrants to the workforce who cannot find jobs are also ineligible. So for the, let's say that you are a teacher and you work in a school and your school is closed down. Obviously, you're not going to be able to qualify for the unemployment benefits because you're still getting paid from the school, right? You're not unemployed. You're working for the government. You're getting paid. You know, it's so like if you're a member of service or you work for the government and you're still receiving your paycheck, you, you can qualify. If you make less than 75 grand 
everyone qualifies for the one-time $1,200 cash payment. We're talking about unemployment benefits now. I want to be clear there. So if you're a teacher and you're at home because your school is shut down, you don't qualify for the extra $600 per week from the federal government. Now it says, this is key too. How long will the payments last? This is, this is important because this is going to transition us to what you should be doing with this time. How long will the payments last? Many states already provide 26 weeks of benefits, though some states have trimmed that back, while others providing a sliding scale tied to unemployment levels. The bill provides eligible workers with an additional 13 weeks, so participants and states with 26 weeks would be eligible for a total of 39 weeks. The total amount cannot exceed 39 weeks, but it may be shorter in certain states. The extra $600 payment will last uh, for up to four months covering weeks of unemployment ending July 31st. So you can get 39 weeks of unemployment benefits. And each week you're going to get your state benefit and you're going to get the additional $600 from the federal government. So going back to this example up here, because I know it may be a little confusing. I want to hammer that point home for you guys, right? So remember this says depends on your state because obviously different states, they pay out different amounts of money. It says the average worker earns about $1,000 a week. And unemployment benefits often replace roughly 40 to 45% of that. The expansion will pay an extra amount to fill the gap. Under the plan, eligible workers will get an extra $600 per week on top of their state benefit. And you will get that for up to 39 weeks. For up to 39 nine weeks I want to make that very clear with you right and this is your unemployment insurance benefits and now I want to get to student loans they have some uh, this other article right here right so it says how to because a lot of you are asking the how to information right so let me go here and post this article in the chat for you guys as well right your money a hub for help during the virus crisis. So this article is going to show you how you can apply for all of these different things that you need. Because Some of you are asking, well, how do I apply? And don't worry, guys, for those of you who came late, I am going to pin these articles in the comment section so that you can go and read this stuff uh, for yourself. But I want to focus on the student loan aspect of this because I know a lot of you have student loan debt and they're allowing you to, to pause some, some aspects. You can actually pause the entire payment or you can pause just the interest part of it. It says how to pause your federal student loans. The U.S. Department of Education has granted a payment waiver of at least 60 days to many people, according to a news release, but it's not necessarily automatic. In general, you have to call your loan servicer to request a waiver and to make sure that your loan is eligible. If you are already more than 31 days late, your loan servicer will suspend your payments automatically. Your servicer will not charge interest during this time, and the waiver is not supposed to hurt your credit score. The waiver does not apply to private student loans, right? This is for federal student loans. One big private lender, Sally Mae, said it is offering suspension of payment for up to three months with no damage to a borrower's credit score. Another one, Neviant, or Navient, made an identical offer for qualified borrowers. A spokesman said that you just need to contact the company and explain how your financial situation has changed. A third big private lender, Wells Fargo, says it would offer help, but a spokesman said the bank would not commit to a set number of months or any other specifics. Using the waiver to pause your federal student loan payments may not be the best move for people in distress if your income has fallen dramatically. It may be better to enter in an income-driven repayment program. So guys, if you lost your job and your income has significantly dropped, 
Don't even worry about trying to pay the student loans. Go and renegotiate a better deal and a better uh, payment schedule because your income has dropped and they have to drop your payments. So make sure you make sure you go and do that. It's very, very key. It says low income borrowers, which many of you may be, uh, enrolled in those programs often end up with no monthly payments for as long as their in, uh, their income stays low. I want to repeat that again. Uh, not the one. I have a cash app and I have a PayPal. It's in the description below if those of you want to donate. And I thank you again for not the one for donating as well. I want to repeat that again. Low income borrowers enrolled in those programs often end up with no monthly payments for as long as their income stays low. So guys, if you lost your job or you your hours got cut back, go and set up a new payment schedule with these with these um with these student loan companies because your income's dropped. And you do this immediately. Don't wait. Go read this article all of like you see this right here? This these are hyperlinks. These links take you exactly to where you need to go to get this stuff done. Do not wait. Do not wait. It says, last week, the federal government announced an automatic student loan interest waiver for federally, federally, federally held loans. That remains in effect if you don't request the new payment waiver. But the interest waiver alone doesn't lower your monthly payment. Instead, you pay what you normally do, excuse me, and the amount will go toward the loan's principal. So they're waiving interest. So if you're making payments on your student loans, you're paying down a principal. So again, understanding debt. If you can get rid of the interest and you have the money to pay your student loans, guys, pay your student loans, right? Because now you could just be knocking down that principal. If they're waiving the interest and you have the money to pay your loans, start knocking those loans out. Also, your tax returns. You don't have to file taxes into July. Normally, the, the tax, the, the due date for your taxes, the deadline is April 15th. It says the federal government has moved the tax filing deadline to July 15th. You don't have to file your tax return or make payments until then. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin wrote on Twitter. So for people like myself, who we own businesses, and I have to pay back the government on April 15th, I'm happy about this. Because now I don't have to worry about paying them or filing any tax returns uh, until July 15th. So for those of us who, you know, we're business owners or you have the 1099, this is beautiful. This is like, you know, music to my ears. Cause every year I always end up having to pay back a lot of money to the IRS. So if I can defer that payment or delay that payment, I'm happy. The IRS had already said there will be no interest or penalties for those who wait to pay until July. If you owed a refund, you'll still receive it as you normally would if you file your tax return, no matter when you submit it. Um, Mail Enlightenment TV, thanks for telling me about the creature from Jekyll Island. Didn't know they tried to implement the Federal Reserve nine times before 1913. Yes, they did. Thank you for the donation. I greatly appreciate it. And don't worry, we're going to start building on that because there's a documentary I think I think his name is I think the guy is Bill Stossel. Towards the end of this, I will pull it up. And this documentary is about like six hours, and he goes into the entire history of America. You know how they use how how the Fed's been trying to get a central bank in America multiple times because the Fed's not the first time the, the first central bank in America. But we're gonna dive into that probably like later on in like the coming weeks. Let me take a sip of water. My mouth's getting dry. But uh, thank you for that donation. It says the IRS or had already, I read that part already. <clears throat> if you have already filed a return and scheduled the payment for April 15th, you can call the IRS and cancel it. So if you had already set up a payment, because some people, they pay their taxes quarterly, you don't have to worry about it. Simply call them and they'll, be, they'll cancel it for you. According to a reader who did himself, we tried the number two and the cancellation option appeared to be working as he described. And last but not least, let's talk about homeowners, right? For those of you who own homes and renters, there's a good chance you can delay your mortgage payment if the outbreak has left you short of money. 
the Federal Housing Finance Agency has instructed mortgage servicers to allow borrowers to uh, whose mortgages are owned by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac to delay payments. This forbearance program allows for a mortgage payment to be suspended for up to 12 months due to hardship by the virus. Federal housing officials have also announced a nationwide eviction and foreclosure moratorium for borrowers of Fannie or Freddie mortgages or borrowers whose loans are backed by the Federal Housing Administration. So call FHA loans. This includes uh, foreclosures that are already in progress. And there's 230 of you watching this video, guys. Please like this video. So again, there's relief here as well for those of you who you own mortgages. Again, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but even Geico, uh, even your credit cards, for those of you who don't know, you can contact your credit card company right now. And I encourage you to do this immediately because, <laughs> hint, hint, I went and did this as well. You can contact your credit cards and tell them, hey, you know, my business or my life is being impacted right now and I can't make these payments and they'll waive. It won't affect your credit score. It won't affect anything. They'll simply suspend any payments that is owed. If you don't believe me, call your credit card company right now. Same thing with car insurance, even a lot of your car payments. Right now, a lot of companies, like the government basically is saying, don't charge, don't try to charge people right now. Like they're waiving all payments. So make sure if you can do that, Call them immediately and try to get uh, send in your uh, somebody just said a hardship letter. Send in whatever documentation you have to to get your payments suspended uh, immediately. Like why pay money if you don't have to? Why spend money if you don't have to? So I'm not going to read the entire article again. I'll post it in the chat for you guys um, and. Please go ahead and read it. They give you all of the websites where you have to go. Um, also, I will pin these in the comment section so you can go back and read them later. Later. And give me one second. I just want to highlight this. And I'll paste this in here as well. And these are some calculators where you can simply... Uh, right here you can go in here and it will basically calculate how much your one-time payment would be so there's a ton of relief in here like as i said for people who if you have student loans if you have mortgage debt if you have any issues with your rent credit cards etc if you owe taxes now i've seen some of you post in the chat that this is socialism again guys you know you know where i stand economically i'm a libertarian I'm a do for self for I'm a bootstrap, but that's where I'm at. But I like to give you guys information because many of you, you have a different ideology than me. And I'm not here to try to make everyone think and believe and do as I do. Uh, I'm just telling you where I stand, but I will I have no problem with sharing some information with you that can benefit you uh, that you may not know about. So this money's here for you. Please, by all means, go and take advantage of this um this money that's out here for you it's your tax dollars at the end of the day and you're going to pay for it through inflation anyway so you might as well go try to take advantage of it if you want to now the next step what should you be doing with your time right this is important because what's going to happen now let's shift gears and let's really start talking about the economy let's start talking about your career let's really start talking about what you could be doing in the middle of this crisis because as i said before we just the bubble just burst and they're going to try to reinflate this bubble they're going to try to throw everything they can quantitative easing like obama did cash flow clunkers tarp tauf zerp they're going to slash interest rates try to go negative they're going to do everything they can to try to get this economy or try to blow the bubble again and it may work it may not work but what we do know is that the economy is going to fundamentally shift and one of the worst things you can do at a time like this is to become negative you're going you're in home, you're quarantined, you're stuck in a house, your anxiety is up. Get busy and do some work. Go try to learn some new skills. For those of you who follow me, you know I believe in free 99. So when I give you information, I believe in free 99. There's something known as open courseware. 
one of the best ways to become valuable in the marketplace is to try to pick up some type of career or a hobby in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And there's open courseware where you can learn literally for free. You can go and take Harvard courses, statistics, portfolio management, computer science. That's why I, I, I gravitate heavily towards computer science. And you can go get this for free. Don't spend your time watching a bunch of conspiracy theory videos. Don't spend your time watching a bunch of people telling you about the end of the world. The world is still going to be here five years from now, three years from now. Your bills are still going to be due three years, five years from now. I watched this happen in 2008. I watched every documentary you can think of. Guess what? My bills were still due next month. 2012 came and went. The Mayan calendar, they prophesied the end of the world. The world didn't end. We're still here in 2012. Okay? Alex Jones said Obama was going to suspend the Constitution and become the president forever like, like Julius Caesar. That never happened. Right? So go here and pick up some courses. Open courseware from Harvard, MIT, anything you want to learn about is here. Introduction to computer science, thinking, and uh, peak finding. Right? Uh, what else they have on here? Let's pull this up playlists they have a ton of different playlists on here right linear algebra structure and interpretation biological chemistry matrix methods they have the entire syllabus i mean everything you could want and need is on these sites for free for free so for example i'll walk you through how this would work Let's say you want to pick up, learn how to Python, program in Python, pick up some coding skills, right? Simple. You come here to view the complete course. You click this, open the link in a new tab. You come there, they have the syllabus. So it's like you're taking the college course. They have the entire syllabus here. Everything you, it'll just, just like you're enrolling in MIT, the readings, what you need to read. They have the lecture videos right here on the site. They have the lecture slides on the site. And you can go pick up how to learn how to program in Python. Now is the time to get better skills. Get you some better skills so, so that you can become more valuable in the marketplace. Now is not the time to sit on your couch and binge watch a bunch of, you know, crazy conspiracies no go put that time in and go pick up some skills because i'm telling you coding computers technology engineering math science is the future look at some of the most valuable companies in the world facebook amazon netflix google tesla right go pick go pick up some skills or like the guy joey crack said go learn another language mandarin right China's coming to take over, right? Now, Python, here's python.org. I believe in giving you guys the resources. This is free to download python.org, free. Free, I'll post this in the chat so you can go and pick this stuff up, free. I, I believe in free 99. So now you can take this information and you can go and do something with it. So you can sit around and you can talk about what was me or you could be a bootstrap and a do for self and figure out a way to make something work for yourself, right? While you're at home. Like when I when I wanted to start trading, I paid a guy. First, I, I think I thought I paid him 5000 Did It went up to 10000 to build an indicator for me, right? And then right here, PyCharm. This is an IDE, free. You can download it for free. I post this in it. A link to all of this stuff is going to be I'm going to pin it in the comment section below, right? And you can download the IDE right here. I'll show you, right? And you can go in here and you can start programming and you can start playing around with a bunch of stuff for free. There's 237 of you watching this. Hit the like button. It helps the content rank in the search engine so more people can find it. Uh, like the video, share the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, join my mailing list that's in the description below. 
Also, follow me on Instagram. And if you want to support the content financially, my PayPal and Cash App is in the description below. Right? So I'm giving you information that you can take it and go do something with. Right? You can sit around if you lost your job. You know, life happens. I get it. But don't drown in sorrow, man. And don't don't become addicted because, see, the problem with socialism and what a lot of people miss. Right. Even Coursera. Before before I go on my rant, here's another uh, website that you can go to called uh, Coursera right here. Again, I'll put this in the chat as well. They have some free courses and they have some paid courses. Uh, someone made it um, brought it to my attention that you actually have to pay for this monthly. But they have a. um. Excuse me. They have a free trial, right? So you can join for free a free trial. But I believe that there's a monthly subscription to get access to some of these courses. Again, I've never taken any courses on Coursera, but I know people who have went on this site and they have certifications as well. So like when you do this course here, you don't really get the certificate for doing the um, open courseware on MIT. But I know through Coursera or even like do some coding boot camps, you get the certification if you want the certification. You know, one thing I learned about like programming and computer science and stuff, they don't really care about the documentation. They really care about can you do the work. They don't really care about if you, you know, what, what college you went to. They really care. Can you do the work? If you can do the work, you're going to get hired and you can work from home remotely and you can make thousands of dollars from home and you can you can learn how to you could be a good programmer within a matter of depending on how much time you dedicate to learning how to code and program. You can be a good coder within a matter of four to six months. Seriously, and I'm not exaggerating by any stretch of the imagination. If you spend four to five hours every day playing around with code. Pick a language, whether it's Python, C, C++, C Sharp. You go there and you play around with that for a good four to six hours every day. You'll be a decent coder where you can go and get you a job. Or you can go and build applications for people or do a, be a freelancer and build stuff on Fiverr. Or, or, for example, like I said, I needed a trading um, indicator built for me. And Ninja Trader, you can actually go and solicit. There's a marketplace where you can pay people to build your trading algorithms or your trading indicators for you. So, <clears throat> but again, right here, free. Download, you download this, this is free. Python.org. You get the IDE, free, download it. Coursera, you can join for free. But like Alexander Wilson said, I guess there's a um, monthly subscription or an annual subscription. So, use these, all this unemployment stimulus that these guys are giving you, that extra $600 you're going to get a week, use that to do something. Productive with your time. Where's, where's the $600, right? This extra $600 that you're going to get per week right here. Do something with it. Go and pick up some new skills. As I said before, put down the hidden colors. Put down the Alex Jones, the David Icke. I know that type of stuff is very uh, seductive and it, it can, you know, raise your anxiety. You know, take... Uh, T take take your time and really go do something with this time and pick up some really good skills that are that's going to benefit you. You know, one of my biggest regrets and mistakes that I made in 2008. Uh, thank you for the donation, Blake Rhodes Anderson. Great time to make a 12 to 60 month financial plan. We're going to get to that in a second as well, Blake Rhodes, about debt and stuff like that. Um, one of my biggest regrets from 2008. Number one, I was poor, right? I was I was freshman in college playing basketball. I didn't have any money, right? I was poor. So one of my biggest regrets is I didn't have any money back then to take to take advantage of the stock market. And I wasted a good three years of my life listening to Alex Jones, uh, Kevin Trudeau, David Icke, Jordan Maxwell. And I got caught up in this whole reptilian, shape-shifting aliens and Planet Nibiru and Planet X and, you know, the Greys and the, uh, you know... Uh, all the blues and all of this different crazy conspiracy stuff. And I'm not saying that those things don't exist or do exist. What I'm saying is that I couldn't do anything about it. Right. I spent so much time preparing for the end of the world when I really should have been spending that time working on 
putting together a financial plan, working on becoming more valuable in the marketplace. And I wasted three years of my life following that foolishness, you know, and I, I don't want to see a lot of you make that same mistake. You're going to see all of these people who claim to be pandemic experts, and they're going to talk about how they have the cure. You just got to sniff some steam, you know, go cut some orange pills and sniff some steam and it's going to cure the virus. If you believe that stuff, I have a bridge to sell you to Planet X. What you need to be focusing on is tangible things that you can do something with, you know, and grow and build something tangible. Right. And I'm giving you something tangible that you can go and learn and play with for free. You don't have to buy no courses. You don't got to buy my DVD. Right. You don't got to fund my DVD projects. I'm not asking you to donate to my school. I'm telling you, I'm giving you information that you can apply in your life and do something with it. I'm giving you information that you can take and do something with in your life. And make a change in your life. Do not be one of those people who gets who gets sucked into that conspiracy trap. Go and pick up some real skills that you can go and do something with. Now, last part that I want to get into is about like the the last person who donated. I want to get his name, uh, Blake Rhodes Anderson. And again, thank you for the donation. Right, Jay uh, Belly. Thank you for the donation as well. Right. The next thing is now, now we're going to start talking about finances, right? Because those of us, you know, like $1,200 isn't going to do anything for me, right? My, my bills are big. I got big bills. $1,200 isn't going to help me out, right? And I'm looking to profit off of the crisis. See, there, there are those of us financially who we need the stimulus. And I get that. That's why I like to be fair and balanced. And I'm not putting you guys down. I understand life happens. Things happen. Do what you have to do based upon where you are at in life. I'm going to get my Umar on right now. I'm going to repeat it three more times, right? Do what you have to do with where you are right now. And don't, don't have no shame in where you are. We all come into knowledge at different places in our lives. Do what you have to do right now, right? Do what you have to do right now for you. But then there are those of us who are looking to profit off of this, right? We're looking to make money off of this crash. You need to be putting together a plan right now where you need to be trying to pay down debt. So if you have income coming in, right, inflation income coming in, that's the whole purpose of inflation, that the inflation should be paying you a higher rate than the interest on your debt. So remember, guys, I was talking to you about like credit card balances. So, for example, let's say you have a lot of credit card debt or you have a big amount of credit card debt. You need to be trying to go and get some credit cards at 0% interest and trying to transfer those balances over or calling your credit card company up now because the Fed's lowered rates, liquidity's in the system. There should be no problem with you getting your credit limits increased and there should be no problem with you getting new credits or getting balance transfers. What you need to be focusing on now is transferring over some of that debt that may be at 16% APR or 22% APR, and you need to try to transfer that debt over to some 0% interest credit cards. Like I just got a, um, an extension on my Bank of America credit card. I had 18 months at 0% interest. They just extended it another 12 months, and they gave me some balance transfers. So what I do, I have some other credit cards whose APRs are 16% or 22%, and I'm going to simply take that off. I'm going to balance transfer the credit from that credit card that's charging me 16% interest, and I'm going to roll it over to this new credit card, well, not a new credit card, but the new extension I have at 0% interest, right? That can save you a ton of money on your minimum payments or your monthly payments on a monthly basis because now when you make that minimum payment, it's not going to interest, it's going to the principal. So right now is the chance to really start deleveraging a lot of debt that you have, right? There's good debt and there's bad debt. What you're also going to start to see is a lot of car companies, they're going to start marketing zero down offers to you. Well, pay your first two months. Don't take that. Don't take that, right? Now is not the time to be trying to rack up a bunch of bad debt unless you have the income to support it. But if anything, you should be trying to pay down debt. Your debt should never supersede 40%, right? Like on your credit card limits, right? Let's say you have, overall, you have 
$20,000 of available credit or $50,000 of available credit, you should never be utilizing more than 40% of it, right? The credit card companies don't want you to use more than 30. You know me, I push the limit, right? Now, the, now if you're trying to build credit and you got the money and you're just really moving money around, playing a circle game, then yeah, you could go up to 90% if you're trying to build credit and build the um the get the limits to go up. But right now, like if you're a person, you have a family and you're not looking to increase no credit limits, you're looking to deleverage, really start focusing on trying to delever right now at this point. And if you're going to take out any debt, it needs to be debt that's going to pay you. Right. So if you're looking at a real estate project, you need to really make sure that you understand that you've crossed all your T's and you've dotted all your I's and you have a plan A, B, C and D. What if you don't have a tenant in that rental unit for 90 days? What if you have a tenant in there, but they can't pay? What if the government says to you, you know what, they're suspending it. Now, the good thing is you don't have to pay your mortgages. So even if the tenant doesn't pay you, you got relief there, but really start sitting down now and really start putting stuff together, putting plans together in your mind and start saying to yourself, how am I moving and move with a purpose, right? So I, immediately I'm calling all of my credit card companies and I'm getting my interest rates dropped immediately, right? So if you have a credit card, especially if you had this credit card for a long period of time, you need to get on the phone with that institution and tell them. I want either to increase my limit or I want to drop the the interest rate. You can do that, right? If you're getting new credit cards, make sure that they have 0% interest. Make sure that they have balance transfers. Call your credit card company and see if you can get a balance transfer, right? Really make, make, make sure you take the time to really start thinking and moving with a purpose, right? If you're investing right now, you need to have, why am I getting in and at what price am I getting out? So if you're buying Apple, right, and I don't know what Apple's trading at right now because I'm not looking at it, but let's say it's trading at $220 and you decide, hey, I want to go long Apple and this is a trade, at what point do you want to get out of Apple if it's wrong? At $180, at $190, or at what price do I want to add? Do I want to add at $190? Like really have a plan on multiple levels as to what you're doing and why you're doing it. Refinancing your home right now. With rates dropping the way that they're dropping, now may be a good time to refinance your home. Take some of that equity out of your home, right? Have some cash on the side, right? Don't don't sit around and just wait. No, the screen isn't frozen. I I, I put up this. I'll move it right now. Right now, now may be a good time for you to um go and uh, refinance your home. Right, I'm just talking now, guys. The the presentation's over. Uh, I've said that I'd say right, right now may be a time to go refi, suck some of that equity out of your home. Don't let it just sit there. Build up some cash reserves. Really start thinking about, it. especially like think about it. I'm banking on inflation. Let's say that I'm banking on inflation, but let's say that we experience deflation. Well, having dollars may be really valuable to you, right? Because we know that the Fed can make the dollar. Uh, you know, the supply of dollars artificially low. So if we get if we get a lot of deflation, having a bunch of cash could be good for you. So you got to think about these things like be balanced is what I'm saying to you. Have hedges in place. Know what you want to do and how you want to do it. That's part of being an investor. Like <clears throat> someone had made a video about me a couple of months ago and they said I'm a flip flopper. No, I'm an investor. And I say this all the time as an investor, as the facts change, my opinion changes. You cannot be married to a position. If the facts change, my opinion will change. I am not emotionally attached to any one investment at all. If the facts change, my opinion will change. And any smart investor knows understands that, right? If we start experiencing deflation on a massive level and the government stops bailing everyone out and gold gets to a certain price, I have to cut it at a certain point to protect my profits, right? That's just reality. That's how investing works, right? You, you have to be a thinker that way. And you also have to have hedges in place. So where one thing's going up, another one's going down and knowing how to move money around, which is why investing's not for everyone. And uh, a young man had asked me the other day about um, trading. He wanted to get into Forex and he said he had $5,000. Rather than investing in 
a bunch of courses and stuff. I pointed him to a forum for free because I believe in free 99. And I'm pointing some of you guys into some open courseware courses. Go on his site and go learn some stuff. Go become more valuable in the marketplace. Save your money. You got the time now. All of, Everything you need is on this website. Learning how to program. Right? Open source software and open source code is everywhere. Right? The I, All of this stuff is free. So there's no excuse why you can't go now and build some skills. The internet opens, opens opportunity up to everyone. I love basic attention token, Jason White. I, I own some of it. I think basic attention tokens are really good coin. I like 0x. I like Tezos. Um, I'll, I'll run down a list of a bunch of coins that I own. Um, obviously, you know, I own Bitcoin. I mean, that's the OG. It has the network effect. I own Bitcoin. I own Ethereum. Ripple is garbage. Bitcoin Cash is garbage. Bitcoin uh, Satoshi Vision is garbage. Litecoin, garbage. EOS, garbage. Binance Coin is good because you're, it's sort of, you can treat it like an ETF. Like if the altcoins do well, then you know Binance is going to do well because they basically are the only place that you can really um, buy altcoins. Tezos, I have a large bag of Tezos. Monero is my favorite coin to move money around and not let the government know. Um, I have a small position in Cardano. I made a lot of money in Cardano when it first pumped, but I don't, I don't really understand what they're doing, what Charles is doing right now. <clears throat> I don't understand what Charles is doing at all with with the with the platform. So, you know, at a certain point, I'm gonna just cut Cardano loose because I just don't I don't like where Charles is taking the project. Um, when you look at Tron, Tron is garbage. Justin Sun, he's a scammer. He's a schemer. I wouldn't trust nothing that Tron is doing. As long as Justin Sun is involved in it, like the the latest stuff he tried to pull with Steaming is just absolute garbage. Um, I have a little bit of Dash left from the early days. I have a little bit of Ethereum Classic. I have not nothing. I think I have like six hundred dollars worth of Ethereum Classic, like nothing crazy. Neo, I got burned in Neo. I lost a lot of money in Neo. I lost probably like forty thousand dollars in Neo. Um, I lost a lot of money in Neo. Um. IOTA's garbage. I have a little bit of Adam. Zcash garbage. Ontology. I got I, I received an airdrop of Ontology from EOS. So I have Ontology. It was airdropped to me for free. Dogecoin is just Dogecoin. Not good or bad. Just nothing there. Basic attention token. I love basic attention a, a token. V chain. I have a little bit of V chain. I like what they're trying to do with V chain. Decred, I got burned in Decred. Augur, love Augur, got a little bit of that. And where's, where's Aeon at? Zero X, Waves. Uh, What else do I have? Nano, lost money in Nano. And Steam, I used to have a Steam, uh, a Steam account. So I used to, when I had my day trading channel a few years ago, I used to... um. I used to what's the name? I used to um, stream live, and I used to upload a lot of my streams to Steam, and I used to make a lot of Steam. That's back when you could game Steam it with the rewards. You know, Steam fell off as well. I like Digibyte, even though I don't own it. I think Digibyte would be something good to speculate in. Digibyte is really, really good. Like if you look at the technology, it's pretty interesting. I just, I, I mean, if you own Bitcoin, why own Digibyte? But it's not bad. I like Digibyte. Then, excuse me, I have gas. Oh, um, and that's about it. Uh, Ripple Ripple is garbage because number one, they're dumping on you every every month. They're dumping Ripple on you. You don't know how much Ripple they're holding. Right, the actual company is holding. They keep talking about all of these businesses that they have adoption with, right? Like at some point, this stuff has to move from vaporware to where people are actually using it. Like you, you, you can't keep talking about what it's going to be, what it's going to be, what it's going to be. At a certain point, it has to start being something. 
Like Ripple claims to have all of these partnerships with these different banks and MoneyGram and Western Union, yet they don't materialize into anything, right? So when you when you start thinking, when you really start thinking about it, you start asking yourself like, okay, you keep talking about all of these banks that's going to adopt it. No one's adopting it, you know, and it's centralized. If you understand the technology, you, it's it's designed to fail. Because when you start thinking about like, why would a bank use Ripple when they can just create their own token? And we already see the banks talking about making their own token. We already see the Fed coin coming out. We already see them, the, the government coming out with the digital dollar. So there's like, there's no reason for a centralized version of a cryptocurrency when we have staple coins and stuff like that. Like, and they're talking about, we're going to make payments faster for banks. JP Morgan can make their own coin. They don't need Ripple. Ripple is not being used. Ripple is not, Ripple, Ripple is paying people to partner with them. No one uses the garbage. It's garbage. Like they're paying people to use it. Like, like if you have to pay, if you have to pay someone to use your, to if you have to pay someone to use your product, that means you don't have a good product. Ripple will never be number one. Ripple will never be number one. I mean, do you understand that the CEO of Ripple said that the only way that they can stay profitable is they have to dump the coin on you? Like, do you understand that they're dumping the coin on you? They're selling. Like, just imagine that. Like, they have an unlimited supply of Ripple. You don't know if they have 500 billion, 200. You don't know how much Ripple they have to, di to, to distribute and sell. So every, every month, your company is literally adding more supply into the market and selling on top of you. That's selling pressure. That's pushing price down every month. And you think that that's a good investment? I wouldn't trust that at all. Uh, let's see what else is in here. I just signed up for a meditation course on Coursera. It was free. Yeah. I'm aware of XRP and Ripple Labs, the difference, guys. I just, listen, I use them interchangeably. You know exactly what I mean. Boeing stocks any good? I mean, if Boeing, if not the one, if Boeing's going to get bailed out, if Boeing gets bailed out, then, you know, you may want to invest some money in it. It's like, it's like putting money in AIG, right? Um, Give me one second. Nano Ledger X, right? If you um, if you want to guess, right? Like if, they, if they, think about it, if you're banking on them getting bailed out, then why not? Right? Like if you want to speculate on the fact that they're going to get bailed out, then I would say that that's a good investment. Right? You got to think about that. Like if you if you think if you think they're going to get bailed out, then you know I would play that game because think about it. If you could invest in AIG, Bank of America, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Uh, back when um, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, back when the the bailout, but before the bailouts happened, you'll be a millionaire right now. Let's let's pull up the stock prices. Let's pull up the stock prices back in two thousand eight. Uh, someone said, "Who posted this right now? Uh, where's the best place to get a, a, na a Nano S Ledger? Right here, right? Put it in the chat for you." Get you a Ledger X, 119 bucks. Cold storage, you won't have any problem. Get you, get you, get you one of these, and you'll be fine. Don't mess with the treasures because they can be hacked. Don't get you a treasure. They can. I believe that most hardware wallets can be hacked, but that's a, you know, a video for another day. Um, for example, right? Let's BAC, Bank of America, right? So let's pull up Bank of America. Let's look at this. That's quick. It's interactive. See, I wish I could. I, I could have taken advantage of. But I was. I was just too poor, man. I couldn't take advantage of this back in 2008. Guys, in 2008, and I don't know if the stock split did a reverse split. I don't know. You could have brought this for four dollars, three dollars. Let's zoom in. 2008, like. Could you imagine if you were to put some money in here at four dollars? Could you imagine? 
Went from $4 all the way up to $36. Could you imagine? Like, you got you to really think about that. Like, if I had foresight that, like, this... The site that I have now, and I would have just put just put money in there and hold it, knowing they were going to get bailed out. Like, literally, when they got bailed out, the stock goes from $4, $3, all the way up to 20 You know, hindsight is twenty twenty. You know? Uh, if you go, let's look at uh, JPM. Look at JP Morgan Chase. All right? Here in 08. Went from twenty dollars all the way up to one hundred and forty dollars. Let's look at Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, right? Hold on, I don't even think they have the stocks anymore for that. Let me see something. Give me one second. I got the symbol. I have all of the symbols here. I don't even know if they're public traded anymore. See if they still have the stock symbols. I used to have all of these stock symbols in here. Oh, they don't have it in here anymore. Let's see if I can find it. Um, boom, 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 boom. Nope, it's not there. Where's my note with all of the stocks I was looking at? Let's look at Goldman Sachs. Let's look at GS. Same thing with Goldman Sachs. Went from $53 all the way up to $280. Let's look at Apple. Look at this. Look at this. Look at Apple in 2008. Like, if, if I had money, we're talking about Apple was, what, $16? Right? Like, could you imagine buying Apple for what? And obviously, I think the stock... I think they did like a split or a reverse split. I'm not sure. But look at this. If you could have bought it at $18 in 2008. Look at that. $18 all the way up to $325. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, like, I was poor, though. I I like, I, I had, I wanted to invest. I just I didn't have any money to invest in 2008. I wish I did. So, right, you, you, got, you have to think about that. Like, and we're, living in, we're living through 2008 all over again. We see the government already starting to do bailouts. I wouldn't start putting any money to work right now because I believe that um, this, isn't, this right here is just like a charting software. But... Excuse me. I, I'm going to tell you what I use. So I use Ninja Trader and I use Doorman. Doorman is the actual uh, broker that I use. I got it through Ninja Trader. I'll show you what I use to trade with. <clears throat> so I use Ninja Trader. Right? That's what I use. And they provide a broker for you. I'll put it in the chat. And this is for futures. I trade futures because futures are just, it's easy to trade futures. Like the, I can get the entire price ladder up to, uh, price ladder up to 30 levels above the market and below the market. Thank you for the donation. Um, so I use Ninja Trader to trade futures. And that's the tra trading platform is Ninja Trader. And then they provide you with a broker. You can use Philip Capital or Doorman Capital. I use Doorman. That's provided through them. <clears throat> um, if you're into stocks, I recommend you using either the Think or Swim platform that's provided to you through TD Ameritrade or Lightspeed. Lightspeed is really good. I'll put I'll put that in the chat as well. Give me one second. You know, lo very low cost. If you're doing a lot of you know in and out trading, algorithmic trading, very 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 tight spreads, low commissions. So I'll put this in the chat as well. This is when I used to when I was at SMB Capital. And I was learning how to trade stocks at SMB Capital. This is the platform that they used to use. Uh, th this is for like if you like seriously trading, like if you're going to be trading a lot of shares. Uh, give me one second. I'll show you the pricing that they have commissions. <clears throat> so you can see, right? If you're doing monthly volume of you know 15 million shares, look at your rate you're paying. 
and the rebates are really good as well. <clears throat> Free trades or no? Um, uh, I don't free trades or no I've yet to learn futures or options so yeah then if you want to play around with the stock see the, the thing about the stock market is the stock market like stocks are going to give you greater volatility You're, you you don't get the same volatility you don't get this the same volatility that you get in stocks uh, that you will in futures you just now you're getting that volatility in futures because of what's happening with the economy but futures are much smoother and easier to trade right because it takes a lot of money to move the market and you can get more leverage in futures and is this like i said it's just better risk to reward there's a better edge for me and how i like to trade because i only like to take two or three trades for the day i don't like i'm not one of those day traders that's just trying to make like like that does 15, 20 different trades in a day. Like I know some guys like they're in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And they're literally making five pennies here, 10 pennies here. Or they'll make three ticks here, two ticks here, three ticks. Like I'm more of a trend trader, right? I like to set it and forget it for the day. I like to establish my ranges. I know what I want to hit. And I'll sit here for hours and wait for a trading setup. Like I'm not one of those hyper day traders that needs to be in and out. Because I'm, I'm trading with a lot of money. So I need to build the position. Which is why I have to stop day trading. Because it's to the point where... Like with the size that I'm trading with, I can't really day trade like that. I can day trade in the the, the um the e minis with my size, but like oil, you know, it's just it's not good for the type of size that I trade. I I can't trade the size that I trade in oil anymore. But for futures, there's Ninja Trader, um, and for stocks, there's Lightspeed Trading. But uh, like for example, when I'm talking about like volatility, right? Let me show you something. Like you you're never gonna get this in. Um, you'll never get this, like this is when I was messing with the marijuana stocks, right? I want to show you the, the volatility that was happening. Like you'll never get this type of volatility and, uh, futures like this, unless there's something major going on. Like I was playing with the weed stocks. This was back in what? 2017. No, this is not it. I think it's weed canopy growth. Cause it was over here we go canopy growth like these type of candles like if you're a day trader right i want you to think about this you had a what this is a from from the high to low the high was 62.76 the low was 51.99 so that's about what a ten dollar ten dollar and fifty cent spread i'm not spread i mean a move that's a ten dollar move, ten dollar and fifty cent move. You're not getting that type of move, a twenty percent move in a day. You're not getting that in futures. You're just not, right? You're not going to get that type of move in futures, right? Wait, that's eleven. I said twenty percent. That's eleven percent. It says right there eleven point eleven point one six, eleven point sixteen percent. You're not getting an 11% move like that in futures unless there's a pandemic happening like right now, right? There's a pandemic happening. So you're going to get these crazy swings. But for the most part in futures, you're lucky if you get like a 2% move, 1% move for the day. But these weed stocks, man, listen, like if you was a trader, a day trader, you know how much money you could be making in these days when you, when you have $10 moves, 11% move, 4% move. 2% move, 6% move, 13% move. Like this, these stocks, the, you can make your year in one week with these stocks, right? Like, you know, like look look at this move, 13%. Like you could, the percentages is right up here for those who wonder where I'm getting the percentages from. Like a 13% move in a day, 7% in a day, you know. And obviously these moves, I, I guess they're not being calculated properly, but this, this is a crazy moves. You know, you don't get those type of moves. You don't get that type of spread where like from high to low, you can cover five dollars, six dollars. You're just not going to get that in futures. Uh, what he said, um, let me see. Navigation our videos. Why risk it? Just invest in the skill trade, own a business. This is all fake. Uh, I agree with most things. 
Yeah, but my business I picked is trading. You don't have to trade. Like trading is not for everyone. Right? Like you trading's not for everyone. And and I I always reiterate that to people like trading is a I went through I went from I first started with I think I started with stocks. Yeah, cuz I watched Wall Street Warriors documentary. So I started with stocks and then I went to futures, looked a little bit at options, then I messed around with binary options which ended up being a scam. Uh then I went back to stocks and then went to futures. Right? And throughout that period like there's a lot of, you know, filling out. And a lot of people don't have that time. It's What's the guy, Malcolm Gladwell? I think he said it takes 10,000 hours before you could become a professional at something. Like, literally, 10,000 hours. You got to think about that. Like, 10,000 hours before you can become a professional at something. So, you know, take your time and find out what you, you know, what works for you. Trading is not for everyone. It's extremely hard. 90% of traders fail and lose money, right? Nine Traders. That's why it's better to be an investor. It's better to just buy and hold stuff, which goes back to my point. Let's look at Boeing, BA, because someone asked me. And I want to show you something. This is what I mean by when I, so for example, right? Like I like to use the S&P, right? So let's look at the, let's look at the S&P. Then we're going to look at um, Boeing. I do like 15 trades. Yeah, I don't see that's I don't do I don't like to do that many trades. Right? So for example, and I said this the other day and I'll repeat this again for you guys. I'm not into technical analysis, but I know there's some people who do trade off technicals. I don't. That's not my thing. I don't believe in technical analysis. I'm not going to just short something because it came up to a line and I'm not going to buy something because it went above a line. That's just not me. But what you'll notice is that the market is made up of psychology, right? Greed and fear. And what happens is you see price touch a level multiple times. Like you, you'll see this time and time again, right? So, right, like you come up here, price gets rejected. Okay. You come up here, price gets rejected. You come up here, price gets rejected. Then you get the fake breakout. Then it comes back down, runs your stops, pops up again, comes back down and runs your stops, right? What you have to understand is that this is all psychology. This is human behavior, right? Because remember, when you're trading, you ever see like the little fish that swim under the big whale? The people who move the markets are the whales. Those are the big, the pension funds, the hedge funds, the mutual funds. They are the whales. We as traders, we are little fishies swimming underneath the whale, right? Right. We, we swim under the whale and the, the big funds, they move, they, we, they move the market. So when you see the price moving like this, these are whales moving money. I'm just trying to get underneath the whale and swim with the whale. Whichever direction the whale is swimming, if he's swimming upstream, I'm with the whale. If he's swimming downstream, I'm swimming downstream. That's what I do. Right now. Very rarely do you see price just go down and come right back up. So when you see the market crashing like this, logic is going to tell you we're going to test these lows again, right? We're, we're going to test the lows again. It's just it's just human psychology. We, we see all of these cases coming out. They're talking about shutting down the entire New York. They're talking about putting the National Guard on every corner in New York. Guys, there's going to be more headline risk. So before I would want to buy something, I know we're going lower. That Just off of my almost a decade of doing this, I would be, I would bet everything I have com comfortably with good risk to reward on that we're going lower or we're at least going to test these lows again. So I wouldn't really be that quick to jump and put money into the market right now. That's just me, you know, and th this isn't financial advice. I'm just speaking for me, from my experience. I don't see that we're going to just go down to here and go straight back up. I, I don't care how much money the Fed prints. We're going to need another $10 trillion at least. The, the stimulus package is good for a few months, but it's nowhere near enough to get the economy moving again like it needs to, right? So when we come back down here again, you know, I'll, I'll start looking on the, I'll start looking to get back in this market around, like I said, Dow 16,000, 17,000, S&P. I want to see us test these lows again. I would want to see us, you know, make a bottom. And I still, I'm not going to buy just off the technicals, but I want to see this market 
you know, churn a little bit before I start looking at particular stocks, like individual stocks. So like Boeing, for example, you know, they're going to get bailed out. The question is, will they need another bailout? Because a lot of people don't understand, like the banks, they were they had to get bailed out multiple times. Same thing with AIG. So, you know, when I look at Boeing stock, let's look at a weekly chart so we can get a better understanding. When I look at Boeing, take a step back, like, you know, we're back down here. I, I wouldn't really be looking to get into Boeing until like, you know, I would have to look at the, the book value. What is it worth? What, what partnerships do they have? You know, you got to really start looking at the analytics now when you're talking about a stock. If you're talking about investing, you have to ask yourself, like, is the business model even viable anymore? Or does does someone need to step in and buy Boeing? You know, like, would another airline company have to buy Boeing up? Sort of like what happened with Wachovia. If you look at some of the banks back in 2008, you got to really start asking yourself that question. Like, is the bailout going to be enough for Boeing? Right. Is the will the bailout be enough for Boeing or do they need 80 billion? You have to ask that question or does someone have to come in and buy Boeing? That because remember, that's what happened during the financial crisis. They they had to step in and merge some of these banks. You know, Washington Mutual, Wachovia, they had to get merged and brought up. Does does someone need to step in and, and, and buy Boeing? So this is why I say, you know, investing isn't that simple. Right? It's not that simple where you're just like, oh, they're going to get bailed out because the bailout might not be enough. Uh, thank you for the donation, uh, JT Coin Rings. Right? Right? So you, 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 have to, you, have to take a, you have to take a step back and you have to really analyze and, and start asking yourself, you know, what am I investing in? See, that's the most important thing about an investment. That's why I, say I don't invest off of technical analysis, right? Like, like if, you're, if you're a technical trader... You draw you draw some lines here, right? Like if you just look at a chart and you just draw a line, like you know, what does this green line mean? Right? What what does it mean? What 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 what's gonna stop the market from going below this green line? Nothing, right? Like if there's something fundamentally wrong with this company, it's gonna go much lower. And again, like I said before, if the airlines are operating at this capacity where 75%, 85% of the, their airlines are empty, their the planes are empty. They're not making any revenue. So you have to really start asking yourself, like, is this business model even viable? And then think about this. Let's thank you for the donation, Mr. J. You you um also I'm not right, just want to give the dude a good chat so he knows someone listening, but I'm not important. Uh what are you talking about, Nevsky Shaw? It's cool, then you peep, you got it for free. Uh not real investing. It isn't doing good on bailouts. Uh, 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 I guess he's talking to someone else. I guess he's not talking to me. But yeah, um, you have to start asking yourself an important question. Like, fundamentally, do you think that people are going to want to jump on a plane once this virus is over? Do you think that people are going to want to uh, jump on a plane immediately and start traveling all over the world? I doubt it. I doubt it. I, I highly doubt that, you know, the airlines are going to recover in the next 12 months, that people are going to just go back to normal and just want to jump on the plane. Uh, I believe that we're going to see like a, sort of like like a, a chart, like a trading chart where we're going to see a peak in the cases, the spread. Then we're going to see it move forward a little bit, retrace a little bit. And then the, the pandemic, I, I don't want to say the name because they will demonetize your video if you say the name. But I believe the virus is going to we're going to get this peak, move sideways, flatten out, retrace a little bit and then push up again. So you have to really ask yourself that question, like, will the bailout be enough? So that's why you, you have to really just be more flexible in your thinking is what I'm saying to you. It's not as simple as just bow buy. I want to buy stuff like Apple. Like I, I know for a fact I love my iPhone and no one's replacing Apple. Right. So. Any, like, I would be looking to buy Apple here. Like, right here, I'm putting some money to work in Apple. Like, if I'm a long-term investor, I'm looking to put something in my pension fund, I'm buying Apple. At these prices, I'm buying it. Like, that, that's a steal for me because this is a good company, right? Like, I'm, 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 I'm in there. I'm not thinking twice about it, you know? Uh, Amazon, AMZN, uh, like, I'm buying Amazon. In these, I'm buying Amazon. 
I'm buying it, period. Like, I'm not thinking twice about it. These are good companies. Amazon's business is going to get bigger. Think about it. Most of these small businesses are not returning. Amazon's going to get bigger. I'm buying Amazon. I'm not even thinking twice. I'm buying Amazon. Walmart, right? I'm, I'm buying Walmart. Like, I know that these major retailers, these, ma these major chains, they're only going to get bigger now. Because of these small companies, that they're going to go under. I'm buying Walmart. I'm not thinking twice. Right? TRT. What's it? What's Target symbol? Right? TGT. I said TRT. TGT. Like, I'm buying Target. I know that they're, they're only going to get bigger. Like, those type of retailers, I know that they're only going to get bigger. I'm buying those. Like, I'm not even thinking twice about it. I wouldn't even hesitate. So. Um, Regeneron. What's Regeneron's symbol? Give me one second. Like, like any biotech companies, I want to be in um, uh, ch -ch -ch. Regeneron. What's, what's that? What's the stock symbol for Regeneron? REGN. Gilead. I want to be involved in those immediately. Uh, let's see. What's this? REGN. Like Regeneron, I, I definitely want to be buying this. With all of this pandemic stuff going on, I want to be involved heavily. Like I wouldn't even think twice about buying it. Right? Um, 3M. I would want to buy this company too because I think that they're going to have to make masks. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that they're the company that's going to have to make masks. I believe that mass sales, mass uh, the the actual mask that people wear. I believe that that stock, that's going to go up as well. Like I, I wouldn't even think like these are things that I just I wouldn't even hesitate. Like if I'm if I'm looking at this and I see them down 20, 30 percent, I'm buying it. I wouldn't even because I know that they're good companies and I'll just dollar cost average on the way down. That's me, right? I just dollar cost average on the way down. Disney is good as well. Um, Qualcomm is good. Chip manufacturers, I'll show you that stock as well. With the whole 5G stuff. Chip manufacturers. Give me one second. I have I have a whole list of these stocks in here, right? Qualcomm. I would definitely be looking at that. Let's see how this see how they look yep i'll definitely be looking to buy that they're down big in the 60s with no problem let's look at nvidia i haven't looked at nvidia stock in a long time i'm gonna show you a stock that i lost a lot of money in i want to show you something right let's look at nvidia first before i show you something nvda let's look at nvidia their chip look at that look oh look at nvidia pumping nvidia is a beast Yo, NVIDIA is a beast. I had a chance to buy NVIDIA years ago, man. I'm kicking myself in the ass. I hate, I, I'm so mad at myself I didn't buy NVIDIA. Yeah, I had a chance to get involved in NVIDIA years ago. But look at NVIDIA. These are chip, man. They make chips that goes into the GPUs with the whole mining stuff. They make graphics cards. They make a lot of stuff. NVIDIA is good, man. A lot of software, a lot of chips, GPUs that go inside of uh, computers. Like, like, there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity. That's why I said, like, if you if you're a long term investor, you want you want to make sure that you are gobbling this stuff up. Like these type of companies, you know, these are good companies. Um, uh, Moses Slaughter Thirteen Regiment said bonds are good too. Muni bonds, yeah, that's good for like retirement if you want. Um. If you want to have like a stable income and I, that goes back to personal finance guys. Right. And I, I, I try to stress that to you guys a lot and thank you for the donation. Again, I try to stress this to you guys a lot of times. It's called personal finance for a reason. It's personal. It's personal. Personal finance. Depending on where you are financially is going to determine what you are investing in. If you're trying to preserve capital, this is where gold and silver comes into play, right? Like if you're if you're wealthy already, right? Like for example, like if you're wealthy, let's look at gold. Like 
I'm buying gold because I want to preserve my wealth, right? Like if, if I got two, three, four hundred thousand dollars and I want to preserve that wealth over time and not lose it to inflation because the government's printing crazy amounts of money, you know, then I'm going to focus on trying to preserve my wealth. I don't want to lose it in to, to due to inflation, right? Uh, or if you want to, if you want to um, make money, right? Like for example, many of you want to make money, right? Like if you're trying to make money, you know, you're going to make money in trading Nvidia. You're going to make money in trading um, in like Google. Like you got to trade to make capital. Like you got to be in and out of the stock to make capital. Like you have to have a business that's making you money in order to make money. That's just the reality. So now if you're retired, then you just want to make a little 8%, 7% on your money, then muni bonds is for you. Uh, Alexander, opinion on Microsoft Azura blockchain. I've never looked at it at all, Alexander Wilson, but I will write it down because tomorrow, guys, just so you know, a lot of you have inboxed me on um, Instagram. So tomorrow, every Sunday, what we're going to start doing is I'm going to actually take your questions. Like for those of you who donated and that you ask me questions, I'm going to research the topics that you want me to research. And then we're going to do a and a every Sunday. And I'll probably answer like 20 questions, 25 questions, but I'm going to research it so I can give you a, a really good answer as to what I think. So I'm going to write down what you just asked me, opinion on Microsoft Azure blockchain. So I'm going to go look into it and then tomorrow we'll discuss it during our Q&A process. So um to those of you who donated so like i know Ray's realm she's donated and she's asked me to cover aisha hall so i'm gonna definitely cover that as well so azura microsoft blockchain so i'll write that down and i'll definitely go into that and, and cover that um tomorrow so uh that's where we are right now um it was something else i wanted to cover one more thing i wanted to cover Let's see something. Uh, oh, yeah. I wanted to show you guys a stock that I got burned in before years ago. This is when I was a newbie and I didn't know any better. All right. Let's see. If, let's see if this symbols even. Let's just show you how like it's easy to get burned. They keep giving me apples. It's not even giving me pran. That's weird. Let's try it over here. I guess the stock probably doesn't even exist anymore. Nope. Yeah, it won't let me. It won't show it to me. Um, wow. I don't even think they have the stock symbol anymore. Let's see if I can pull up the old symbol. Just to show you, like, I've, I've been doing this for a long time, guys. Long time. Molly Corp. Uh, let's see if, let's see if, let's see if somebody like, actually has the, um, the chart. I'm trying to look for it over here. The company doesn't even exist anymore. Damn, they don't even have like no one has a chart a chart of this. Let's see if I can find it. These this was this is when all of the Chinese rare earth stocks were like the the craze. Everyone was talking about it. They don't even have like it's not even listed anymore. The stock's not even listed anymore. I'm trying to find it over here. So, damn, I can't find it. No matter. I wanted to show you guys in some one last thing anyway before I get ready to go. My internet's acting weird. Okay, let me show you guys one last thing. Right, this is what I want to show you guys. Right, because a lot of you are asking me questions, so I want to play this for you so you can understand. This is why I'm confident in what I talk about. Let me put this on for you. Let's mute this and let's make this turn this on. Because the seats have been hurt very bad, and the beautiful thing if you signed a bill today, the size of which could choke an entire herd of horses. And before you even had a chance to put pen to paper, people were already talking about the need for phase four. Yeah. Do you see a well, phase yeah. four, and where do you think the priorities are? Well, it, it may be something where we're going to have to help states, because the states have been hurt very bad. And the beautiful thing about our country is 6.2 trillion, because it is 2.2 plus four. It's 
two trillion dollars, and we can handle that easily because of who we are, what we are. Uh, it's our, it's our money. It's our. We are the ones. It's our currency. We can handle it, and we can handle. I watched uh, Jerome Powell the other day, and he did a good job. He said, we'll do whatever we have to do. John, we have to do whatever we have to do. You signed a bill today the size of which... So, I want you to think about that. I really want you to think about that for a second. Like, he's basically saying that they're going to print as much money as they want to print. He's going to print as much money as need be. He's basically quoting modern monetary theory word for word so again like if if i'm buying gold silver precious mining metal stock uh if i'm inv investing in bitcoin and crypto what what has the government produced over the past two weeks that makes me change my mind right what's what's changed nothing's changed <laughs> Nothing's changed. Nothing. Nothing at all. So that's what I try to tell you guys. Like when you're investing, you have to have a thesis. You have to have a reason why you're buying something. Like this is what I need to see. Right? They just printed six trillion dollars out of thin air. The Fed says unlimited QE. They're gonna buy bonds, buy ETFs, buy corporate debt. They're going to buy treasuries. They're going to buy mortgage-backed securities. What? What's changed to make me say I shouldn't own gold? Nothing's changed. Nothing, nothing's changed for me. I'm I'm still going to keep buying what I'm buying until I see something change. Now you got the president basically saying, listen, man, we're going to do what we have to do. And I plan on doing a video, like a 10-minute video about this in the coming days. I mean, like, literally, they're telling you they're going to print money. We know what's going to happen. You read the creature from Jekyll Island, you know what's going to happen. Because the government doesn't have the heart to do the right thing. They just will never do the right thing. Because most people don't care about inflation. They don't care about investing. They only care about stock prices going up. But they don't realize, like, yes, yeah, stock prices go up, but that's asset inflation. And then they go down and you get to deflation. So you get fucked both ways. Excuse my language. But, um... Are you going with the junior miners? Yes, yes. I own. I own. So you have to be very careful with the miners. Um, I do backflips. You have to be very, very careful with the miners because most miners are aren't profitable. Most miners lose money, so you have to be very, very careful with which miners you pick. Um, you need to make sure that they're they're not like a a mining ex exploration company, but they actually are working on like real projects. Because some of these miners, like they they're like these cryptos of the white paper. Like they they hope that one day. They may get the equipment and they may find some gold. You need to make sure that you're investing in a real mining company, that they have the infrastructure, they have the people, and they're actually mining and looking for gold. That's the important thing when you're looking at these miners. 100% um, Jason White, I agree with you 100%. If you don't own it, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Same thing with crypto. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. With Bitcoin. You don't hold the private keys. You have your crypto sitting on an exchange. If it gets hacked or it gets stolen, you deserve it. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. Same thing with my gold and silver. I hold it in my hand. I have it in my safe. And I have my guns to protect it. So if you can get my gold, you're going to work for it. If you can get through my guns, if you can get through my passwords, then you deserve to have my gold. I don't think you will, but if you can, then you deserve to have it. Um... BKZ, BK's chief, China owns the biggest reserve in gold in the world, and they are still buying more. That is also why they're growing presence in Africa. Yeah, well, they have to. You know, it, it, any person, gold has always been money. Guys, gold will always be money because it's rare and it's scarce. It's money. It's been money for thousands of years. It will always be money. Um... Uh, 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 uh. Uh, Moses let's say teachers futures I, I, I'm in the process of trying to 
I have to go through some regulatory hurdles because I have to make sure that when I'm teaching you and I'm sharing information with you that I can't be sued. Because the problem for a lot of people is that they don't do their due diligence as to when you like mention something, they just go and buy it. So you have to make sure that you have like risk disclaimers and stuff out there in case a person blindly takes your advice and loses money that they can't come back and sue you. So, um, you know, that's what I'm in the process of doing. So, but I'm going to leave the video here, guys. Thank you to everyone that's donated. Tomorrow is going to be our Q&A, our first Q&A day. Um, I've taken certain questions that I want to um, answer and we'll do it from there. So please, guys, do me a favor and like the video, share the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Make sure you join my emailing list so that I can mail you. Um, follow me on Instagram, message me on Instagram. Thank you to everyone that has donated. I greatly appreciate it. And for those of you who want to support the content financially, the Cash App and the PayPal is in the description below. I will see you guys tomorrow and we'll do our Q&A tomorrow. So, and it'll probably be between like two and four o'clock, uh, two and four o'clock, as long as nothing comes up. So have a great day, guys.